Do you remember the good old days when we bought a game and that's it? You could play the game from start to finish and got all the content. Then in 2006 this guy came along. In Elder Scrolls Oblivion we got the first microtransaction ever for this horse armor, a completely cosmetic item and no one believed that someone would pay actual money to just change the look of an in-game character. Well as it turns out EA reported in their last earnings report that they made 1.67 billion US dollars in only 3 months from microtransactions alone. Or Activision Blizzard earned 1.2 billion US dollars from microtransactions in just 3 months. So there's really no surprise that all these gaming companies are searching for new ways to monetize in-game stuff. And it seems like the latest way for in-game monetization are NFTs. Over the course of the last weeks this has been a major discussion topic in the gaming community. And in today's video we are going to take a look into what NFTs actually are. We look into why gaming companies want to use them and of course we discuss if they are all bad or if there are extra chances for games and gamers. Let's talk about NFTs. Happy holidays gamers from around the world. This is Boxenberger, the video game enthusiast from Germany with my last video before Christmas and that's why I want to briefly say a big thank you to everyone who has supported me on this channel over the course of this year. You guys are absolutely amazing. I do hope that everyone gets to spend some time with their loved ones and have some relaxing days. By the way, there won't be a break here on this channel. I have some videos planned out to bridge the next couple of weeks until the gaming news will continue to come in around middle of January. So if you haven't already Already make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell to not miss out on these videos. Okay, thank you guys, you rock big time and now let's see what NFTs actually are. NFT stands for non-fungible token. NFTs can be really anything digital, such as drawings, music, your mind downloaded and turned into the next Cortana, whatever. The specialty about this is that it is a unique digital item. It can't be copied, it can't be faked. For instance, recently a person paid 6.6 .6 million dollars for an NFT video by Beeple. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Of course, you can always screen catch up that video and make a copy of it. But the unique thing about it is that you actually have ownership of that NFT in this example of this respective video. So now how does this work? How can such a digital item be made really unique so that it is obvious that you have the ownership of that digital item? The technology used for that is called blockchain. Probably everyone has heard the buzzword because cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are using it too. But what is it actually? According to Wikipedia, a blockchain is a growing list of records called blocks that are linked together using cryptography. Each block contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp and transaction data. The timestamp proves that the transaction data existed when the block was published. As blocks each contain information about the block previous to it, they form a chain with each additional block reinforcing the ones before it. Therefore, blockchains are resistant to modification of the data because once recorded, the data in any given block cannot be altered retroactively without altering all subsequent blocks. So in other words, it is a technology that makes it impossible to retroactively alter data. Therefore it is used to make NFTs unique items that cannot be faked and with that it makes it possible to make a certain data set like for instance an in-game item, a unique item, non-copyable and most importantly one person can be the actual owner of that file. Okay now why is this making such a buzz in the gaming industry? Well big publishers like Ubisoft or EA have recently spoken about the future of these NFTs. EA boss Andrew Wilson referred to NFTs and blockchain gaming as an important part about the future of our industry. Ubisoft boss Yves Guimont has talked to his staff and explained that NFTs are only just the beginning and Ubisoft put out a video about their plan recently. And it was probably the most downloaded gaming video this year with more than 40,000 dislikes. So it's obvious that people are not particularly happy about NFTs coming to the gaming industry. And why is that? Well there are actually two main reasons I think people are concerned or hesitant towards NFTs. The first is the mobile and browser gaming market. There are already a couple of NFT based games out there. Well actually I find it hard to call these games games because many of them are not even really playable. They are mainly based on people either buying or making NFTs. Some of them don't even run in a proper game engine or anything. And everyone who follows my channel knows me that I'm actually a very 
very positive guy, but there's literally nothing good to say about these NFT mobile or browser games. The second thing is that this whole discussion reminds me a lot of free to play games. And I'm definitely not saying that free to play games are bad per se. On the contrary, there are some good ones out there, like the insanely popular Fortnite, Call of Duty Warzone and the latest one Halo Infinite. But considering the overall gaming industry, those free to play games that handle free to play well are very rare. Ever so often those games are actually based on tricks, making you think that the microtransactions are only cosmetics, when in reality they are not. They actually build in hard paywalls for progression, loot, you name it. And especially the hardcore gamers are relatively hesitant towards these free to play games, because we have seen a lot of them either not being good, or they make questionable in-game purchases more or less mandatory, or they are just games that suffer from lackluster development. And microtransactions are not only available in free to play games anymore, we know that there are full priced games out there that actually heavily rely on you investing even more through microtransactions in order to be able to actually play and enjoy the game. So it's really no surprise that the gaming community is concerned about NFTs coming to core gaming. But I want to raise the question, if they are all bad or if there is actually a potential for them being used in some good way for games or gamers. Well, even though I think it's highly unlikely that game publishers will actually make use of NFTs in this way, there are a couple of things that could be done. Like for instance, they could be used to make it possible to sell digital games or DLCs. Today you can only sell your physical copy of a game, but since NFTs allow for actual digital ownership, Ownership, which by the way we don't have if we buy a games digitally today, NFTs could make it possible for a platform holder to actually allow gamers to sell their digital purchased games, because ownership can be easily transferred from one gamer to another one. Of course they could also be used for developers to give digital unique items towards for instance very passionate fans, and that fan actually owns that unique item like a certain skin, a weapon or whatever. The owner of this unique digital item can then decide to either sell it or keep it, because it is his item, just like any physical stuff you own. Another potential could be that user-created content gets actual value. Let's take the Microsoft Flight Simulator as an example. There are a lot of users that created content for that game and they can sell it in the marketplace. But the ownership of those digital sold items are not with the people who actually created them. This is just one example, but it is a possibility that user-created content can be actually sold by the user to another user. And this is actually how in the mobile and browser gaming market developers try to to lure people in. Their promise is play to earn, when in reality it's not really playing what people do. And even more so, people have to actually buy into the games to be able to possibly earn. But I'm digressing. User generated content that is being sold from user to another user is a thing that NFTs can be used for. And that also brings in a lot of concerns, because today we play games because they are supposed to be fun. The gameplay is what we are all enjoying in games. If the promise of user created content comes into focus of the core gameplay experience, gamers are not actually playing games anymore, they are grinding for the hope to make money. And this could drastically change the way how games are being built. Be that as it may, the thing is that all of these NFTs only make sense if a user can sell their items. And since NFTs all rely on some sort of cryptocurrency, there needs to be a way they can be sold. Since there is no independent unified marketplace for NFTs, every publisher will have to make their own currency and their own marketplace for you the gamer to either purchase or sell your stuff. And from a publisher's point of view this is awesome because that's the second time the publishers can then monetize on NFTs. They will charge you an exchange rate so you can change from the EA cryptocurrency or the Ubisoft cryptocurrency for example to a Bitcoin. They will definitely charge a certain distributor fee and we shall see how much in the end will come to the player who actually sold his stuff. Like in every economy it's usually the merchant who makes the money and not the one who makes the product. This is how it's always been even if we go by centuries for instance the spice merchant has definitely made more more money from just selling the spices than the one who actually produced the respective spice. And that's the same for of course digital distribution and the digital marketplaces with NFTs. Now it's really not new that we have in-game marketplaces. We've had some bad examples for instance like Diablo 3 at launch or World of Warcraft. I remember all too well these farms that occurred in China where kids were forced to farm for certain in-game stuff that is then being sold to World of Warcraft players. With NFTs being even more attractive for in-game monetization, marketplace publisher depending cryptocurrencies and the respective exchange business. I don't think it's safe to say that these kind of terrible practices won't occur again. Don't get me wrong, I totally get why developers and publishers want to maximize their profit. And I have nothing against that. We also have to consider that with all these upcoming metaverses, NFTs can actually be used for those as well. So that you can actually own a house, a car, clothes or a digital equivalent of your fart in such a metaverse. 
That's what GSC Game World, the developer of the upcoming Stalker 2 had in mind. Well, not the far thing, but they wanted to give out unique items in their Stalker metaverse to players. After a huge shitstorm, they decided to retract all NFTs from that metaverse. By the way, I'm glad that they did that because Stalker 2 is one of my most anticipated games and I didn't want to have such a controversy around this beautiful game. Be that as it may, the whole metaverse thing around Stalker 2 really showed one of the biggest problems with NFTs right now and that's communication from publishers. Publishers don't communicate properly what their vision is for NFTs. Usually publishers speak to investors during earning calls about NFTs and talk about new ways for monetization. Ubisoft for instance didn't even use the word gaming anymore. They said they want to build new economies. And of course with that kind of phrasing in mind I don't think of a game anymore. I think of something interactive that allows Ubisoft to make more money based on my time I invest into that economy. If publishers want to be successful with NFTs they definitely have to find a way to properly communicate to gamers what are our benefits of NFTs, what is the monetization model, how does it impact the actual gaming experience and how much will it cost me in the end if I decide to play an NFT based game. Basically make communication and the vision transparent and well laid out. But with that I already want to come to my conclusion. Listen, let's be real here. NFTs are coming. I don't think there's anything we can do about this as a community. Of course, I could say we can all boycott NFT games, but let's face it, that didn't work for microtransactions either. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't speak up. Voice our concerns, voice our disrespect for shady business practices, make developers and publishers aware of what we expect from NFT based games. I hope this video helped you a little bit to understand what NFTs are and that there are actual possibilities for NFTs to be implemented in an acceptable way in games. And it is up to us, the community, to make publishers understand that they shouldn't mess with the hobby we all love and that they need to be honest, transparent and that NFTs in games should be implemented with the gamers interest in mind. And please make sure to let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on NFTs. Do you see chances or do you absolutely despise them? Okay, but that brings me to the end of this one and once again I want to say a big thank you for everyone who not just made it to the end of this video but who has been there the entire year with me on this channel. Like I said in the beginning there will be content in between the years on the channel so make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and the little notification bell. You can also find me on Twitter where you can always strike up a gaming conversation or become a channel member and help me take the channel to the next level. I'm absolutely humbled by your support, you rock big time and I do hope that you have some amazing holidays and a happy new year and don't forget to game on.